after powerhousing its way up to Category 5 status, Cyclone Errol is now beginning its inevitable downfall. Just down now to a Category 4 on the South Atlantic and the Australian scale. Uh, right now we have it with winds of 150 miles per hour, and it is rapidly weakening as wind shear is going to dramatically increase. It arguably is over the system right now. So as I said, winds are 150 miles per hour, that's 240 kilometers per hour. Movement is still due south right now at 5 miles per hour, pressure 928 millibars by the way. Though the movement vector is expected to turn more easterly over the next 12 to 24 hours and then make landfall around two days from now over the Cockatoo Island region of Western Australia. So this is where the storm is located right now, 14.7 degrees south, 418.9 degrees east if you're tracking at home. That's 360 miles away from Broome, 374 from Pardue, 436 from Karatha, 586 from Exmouth, and 1202 from Perth. Those are once again in miles. In kilometers, those are 509, 602, 702, 943, and 1934 respectively. All these locations are a little bit out of date, um, given that the storm is moving pretty slowly, but they remain pretty much on point. So this is what the storm is for is uh, right now in terms of wind field. It's got a very small wind field, very small storm. That's why it was able to intensify so fast, because it had a very small eye and it was very small as a storm, and the conditions were very ripe for the storm right now. Cyclone Watts, however, has been issued now from Curry Bay to Broome, and it does not include Broome. So those are mainly going to be in the Cockatoo Island region of Western Australia. I kind of think that area, that's where we're going to be seeing the storm come in. No, not thankfully anywhere near this intensity of what we're seeing right now. You know, it's going to be much, much weaker than this, down to probably a tropical storm, a weak tropical storm at that as it comes in here. So Arrow is forecast to track very slowly off towards the east, towards the Western Australian coastline. Now the rainfall threat isn't going to be too large. We've seen much larger than this in these kind of areas. Still, up to 200 millimeters of rainfall in and around the landfall area is still dangerous and can still cause some flooding and flash flooding problems. If you're encountering a, a flooded area or flooded roads, turn around, don't drown. Now, of course, the, the storm still is going to pack dangerous wind gusts up to 50 to 60 miles per hour as it comes in here, and those wind gusts are capable of causing damage. Do not underestimate those smaller wind gusts, especially um, structures that are poorly built, as that can still cause severe, severe to catastrophic damage. Even those lower wind gusts, we've seen it here in the United States. So this is what the track forecast is looking at right now. You can see it very rapidly fall off here, down to a Category 1 here in 24 hours. Maybe even weaker than what I'm going to be in 24 hours. Um, making landfall in Western Australia, maybe with winds around 50 miles per hour. And then by just three days ahead of now, it's gone over Western Australia. And the energy will gradually move off towards the south and gradually dissipate. And then that will be the end of the tale of Cyclone Errol here. Very interesting storm to be tracked here over the next few days. So the HWC's forecast cone, they did peak it as a Category 5 earlier. They're down to 145 miles per hour now for the next advisory, which will be coming out in about an hour or so as a narration. Uh, so they do forecast rapid weakening, as you can see, um, as it comes off towards the coastline here, making landfall here, maybe around 50, 45 miles per hour, maybe a little bit weaker than that, and rapidly dissipating as it moves inland, as storms frequently do in this kind of area. Although we have seen some brown effect storms in this area, not going to be seen with this storm um, due to the rainfall that not being as pronounced as previous storms. So here's what we're seeing on these satellite estimates kind of things. They're kind of all over the place now that the storm's eye is collapsing. AMSU's down to Category 3. NOAA ADT all the way down at Category 2. It never even got up to Category 3 for the peak intensity of the storm, believe it or not. Um, but all of our estimates right now are, are generally colored for the time being around 140, 145, 150 miles per hour. We've gone with 150 primarily due to wind lag, although it could be a little bit lower than that by now, given that, that the storm is going to be rapidly weakening. So here's what we're seeing right now for the GEFS tracks. Really good consensus on the eastward track over the next few days. Once again, making landfall in the Cockatoo Island area of Australia as a tropical storm. So it's, we have pretty good confidence on where the storm is going to go and at what intensity. You know, wind shear, you know, we've, we've seen wind shear do a number on these kind of things. And I don't really see why this will be any different, especially with this being a very small storm. Larger storms tend to be a little bit more resilient to wind shear. Uh, smaller storms tend to not be on the opposite direction. So we'll have to wait and see uh, how this storm weakens over the next few days. And there is still the chance that it might not even be a remnant, might not even be a, a truckload cycle whenever it makes it to Western Australia. We'll have to wait and see on that over the next few days, though. So the GFS track's pretty certain on where the storm's going to go over the next few days um, as it goes off towards the west here, or east side. 
Sea surface temperatures, however, underneath the storm are piping hot. 32 to 33 30 degrees Celsius, believe it or not. So if the if wind shear wasn't a problem, this storm would probably be, it'd probably be you know, 180, 185 miles per hour by now. But of course, wind shear has something to say about that. It's up to up, you see how, how strong the wind shear is going to get here in just a minute. But sea temperatures, once again, not a problem at all for this storm. Though, once again, that wind shear aspect is the major driving force of the storm's weakening. Wind shear is really the, the life or death for these kind of things. So, surface observation spots aren't really going to be telling us too much over the next few days. We'll have to wait and see uh, how observations get as the storm comes closer to the land. Especially those observations you can see um, in the landfall area off towards the east southeast of the storm. We'll have to watch those very closely for any observations. They're reporting pressures in the uh, mid to high 1000s for the time being, but again, this storm is very is very small, so we're not really going to be seeing pressure drops or any wind increases until we're basically 12 hours or less from landfall. That's kind of how the storm is going to go. That's how small it is. So you can see the model tracks are pretty clustered over the next few days, bringing it off towards the southeast. Maybe a little bit of a stalling motion as it comes inland, but obviously wind shear is going to be tearing this thing to shreds by that point. So the rainfall threat is going to be far off displaced from the center. I imagine probably to the southeast of the center. So we'll have to wait and see how bad the rainfall threat is going to be. I don't think it's going to be too bad. We've seen way, wet, way worse uh, flooding threats in this area though. The intensity forecast, you're going to see just how, how quickly it drops off an absolute cliff here. Um, mo mo most, most models unanimously in agreement of very rapid weakening. Maybe just as maybe just as fast as intensified here, and this is why. Look at that wind shear graphic, up 40 to 50, maybe even up towards 55 to 60 knots of wind shear. Good luck of a, of a tropical cyclone surviving that. Good luck. Um, you know, tropical cyclones typically struggle with 20 to 25 knots. How about double that? Maybe even a little bit more than that. Good luck surviving that. Um, Arrow's certainly got a challenge ahead of it with his wind shear. Let's see how it performs, though. I don't think it's going to be very well. Of course, I don't know, sea surface temperatures and relatively many not a problem for this storm either. So it's just the wind shear that's going to be the main driving force of the storm's ruling, of the storm's weakening phase, and ultimately what will be ending its life in about three days' time. So here's what the satellite imagery looks like. It looked phenomenal earlier. Um, you have to we'll go back and look at imagery here. But this is what it's looking like right now. Um, you can see the eye is collapsing with increasing amounts of wind shear. You can see a lot of the convection now is being displaced to the southern side of the storm. So that indicates that the wind shear is in, in the southerly direction. And you can see all all just around the storm, it's just it's streaming off towards the south here. And that wind shear is only going to increase over the next few days as the storm pushes off towards the east-southeast here. The eye temperature earlier did, I, I think, reach around 20 degrees Celsius. That's really warm for a storm of this, of this intensity. And I would judge to say that the storm probably peaked around 165 miles per hour, maybe a little bit higher. I know some Dvorak readings were up towards 180 miles per hour for this storm, so certainly one for reanalysis eventually over the next few months. We'll have to wait and see what data says though. We'll have to wait and see what our animation releases for the uh, our final call for the storm, of course. But Category 5 peak nonetheless, down towards Category 4 now. A dangerous storm still, regardless of how weak it's going to be in Australia, this storm is still going to be extremely dangerous, posing life-threatening flash flooding. Of course, you've got the rainfall threat on top of that. And you've got, of course, the rip current threat. That's going to be the most immediate threat right now is going to be rip current. So if you're on coastal areas, be sure to look out for those. But still a dangerous storm threat coming towards Western Australia coastline just proves that these storms can still happen even as we get into May, or closer to May, I should say. Australian season? Not done quite yet. <laughs>